Hello and welcome to Switzer Super TV. I'm Peter Switzer. This is my colleague Paul Rickard. Hi Paul. Hi Peter. So we are looking for blue chip, top quality companies and the way in which you do it. And it's not easy, but it can be done, Paul. Well, it can, Peter, and I think the importance of research is just so critical. Mm, and we're going to look at the key things, the qualitative things that will help you do that. Blue chips tend to be stayers. They, they hang around for some time, don't they? They do. On the chart in front of you, you can see the current top 10 companies by market capitalisation. And I think, Peter, each of these should be considered to be a blue chip. Oh, yeah. Even without definitions, everyone agrees, I think. But over time, of course, blue chips do change. And a good example of that was a company called HIH, an insurance company. A bit of fraud went on, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, and it was a once a blue chip back in the 90s is no longer there. But there hasn't been that much change. And if we look at, say, for example, the, the top 10 companies of 2004, well, notice they're by and large the same as today. Now, a couple of companies have gone. Mm -hmm. One, for example, was News Corp. It just took its listing offshore. Overseas, yeah. And Westfield split itself into a number of different companies. Mm. The companies that have come into it are CSL and Woodside, who have just grown up. So I think uh, investors can have a reasonable degree of comfort that most companies will hang around. Importantly, how do you avoid the HIHs? That's what you also want to make sure you do. Yeah. And I think there are three things you look at. You've got to look at the, at the industry that mm. the, uh, the company's in. You've got to look at the strategy of the individual company. And thirdly, the quality of the management. Well, what are the key things around the industry? Well, there are a number of things around industry, but let's start with the things that you, you, you don't want to do. Mm. For example, I don't want to invest in what I describe as an old world industry, something like uh, old media, because mm. uh, I think there's too much change. But to looking at the industry, what are the growth prospects for the industry? Uh, what's the level of competition in that industry in Australia? Um, arguably, you might want something that's got relatively low level of competition yeah. and high barriers to entry. And thirdly, what's how much government regulation or, or other regulatory things are that are considered because that could be a negative uh, for a company in that industry. Now, I know you're not keen on insurance companies. Look, an example of an industry where I think there's lots of what I describe as exogenous risk. These are things that, as investors, you can't control. So I don't touch insurance companies, for example, and that's an industry I stop with. Also, let's focus now on strategy because you've covered in industry well. When it comes to strategy, you should be looking at you know, what are the company's plans? Um, how are they going to facilitate growth? Are they looking at acquisitions? Are they exploring overseas opportunities? And do they already have a pretty big footprint overseas? I think they're important for assessing a good company. Yeah, and a good example of that, I, one of my favourite companies, mm. Peter, is Ramsey Healthcare, yeah. which has just been a fantastic success in the stock market. But, you know, take it back to grassroots, a really good business in Australia working with private hospitals and taking that model both into the, uh, the UK and the French markets. Okay. But management is critically important there too, isn't it? Management is, is what it comes down to. You know, who is the CEO and the CIO and the uh, CFO? And what's their experience? How does that relate to both the company and the industry they're operating in? Mm. What sort of track records do they have? Do they have, have they done acquisitions before that actually deliver for shareholders? Mm. Um, what are their plans around succession? How stable is the team? I think at the end of the day, of those three things we've talked about, management is probably the most important. Yeah, and, and I think you should be using the annual general report, but you can also just Google it as well and get all the information that's going on about the company. I think that gives you a great insight into the potential that, of that company and its management. So today we looked at the qualitative factors in trying to find good quality companies. Next time we'll look at the financial metrics that help you find good quality companies. I'm Peter Switzer. Thanks for joining us.